Hi, everybody. Hope you're all having a good day today so far. Uh, today we are going to talk about convex sets, convex combinations, convex combinations of vectors. Uh, so, of course, we're going to be in a vector space. So, let's say that V is a vector space. That's our uh, notation for a generic vector space. And so let's uh, start right off with, uh, as we often do, with a definition. So uh, here we have a definition of a convex set. So actually notice right off, before we get into the definition, notice that in the definition I've written uh, x and y are points in the, uh, in the, in the set S. And uh, they're really vectors. We're in a vector space. So, you know, what I've done is something that people generally do and that I do a lot, and that is I'm using points and vectors interchangeably, basically synonymous. They're, they're synonyms. Okay, so the definition says that a set S is convex if whenever we have two points in the set and we take a uh, we call a convex combination of those two points with some scalar between 0 and 1, then that combination, that convex combination has to be in the set as well. So uh, I use the term convex combination here. So let's actually write the convex combination down here. So what we have is 1 minus lambda times x plus lambda times y. And so, what we've got is a pair of vectors, x and y, and a scalar that's between 0 and 1. So whenever we have any two vectors and a scalar between 0 and 1, and we form this kind of linear combination, but the scalars are in this relationship, then we call that a convex combination of the two vectors, x and y. And the definition says that if the set is convex, then it has to be the case that uh, any convex combination like this is going to be in the set S. Well, I think you're probably all somewhat familiar with convex sets and kind of what they look like. So let's take this definition and start off by doing uh, a couple or three examples that will give us a little better handle on the notion of convexity. So. Let's look in R2. So these examples are going to be in R2. And let's look at, to begin with, let's just look at a circle. So the circle here, not including the space inside the circle, and of course not including the stuff outside. So the set consists of just the circle. Let's call that S. And so uh, let's first look at um, a convex combination of a couple of points in S on the circle. So let's take this point over here, and let's take this point up here, and a convex combination of those two points, let's say that's X, and let's say that's Y. A convex combination of these two points is going to be a point on the line segment uh, joining the X and Y. And so let's just suppose that lambda here is 3 fourths. So we would be at about this point here. And uh, so that is going to be uh, 1 minus lambda times x plus lambda times y. So this is a convex combination of x and y. It's a point on the line segment joining x and y. And it, the specific lambda associated with this point is about, let's say, 3 fourths. So when lambda is 0, we're going to be at x, because lambda is 0 here, and this is 1. So the x here corresponds to the situation where lambda is 0. And the y corresponds to the situation where lambda is 1. So this is 0, and that's 1. Notice that um, I could also write this as uh, x plus 
lambda times y minus x. That's another way I could write that same convex combination, that same point. 1 times x plus lambda times y minus x. Uh, and that, in some respects, might even make it a little clearer that this is the point x plus some multiple of going in this direction down here. And I'm going to refer to this quite often as, by shorthand, x of lambda. So when lambda is 0, x of lambda is just x. When lambda is 1, x of lambda is y. And as lambda goes from 0 up to 1, the point on the line segment, the convex combination, moves from x to y. Now, this drawing and all this uh, stuff we did up here is motivated by this definition. And of course, these convex combinations are not on the circle. They're not in S. So clearly, according to the definition, this circle, not including the space in between, is not a convex set because all these convex combinations are not in S. Now, now let's suppose that S instead of being the circle, is what we would call the disk. So now suppose that S consists of the circle and all the stuff inside the circle. And uh, that would be, uh, as I said, the way that we call that a disk in R2. And so now, if all the material, all the, the space inside the circle is included, now it's the case that all the convex combinations of this point X and this point Y are in our set S, and that's true for any X and Y that I take. The definition requires that, that for, for any X and Y in S, and for any lambda between 0 and 1, we have to have the associated point or convex combination in the set S. And you can see intuitively that that is the case for this disk. So let's take another couple of points. Let's let that be X, and let's let this be Y. So now again, I've got two points in S, and I take the convex combinations of those two points, that's supposed to be a nice straight line segment there, all the things on the line segment are in the set. In fact, if I take the same lambda, 3 fourths, I would have a point on the line segment, 3 fourths the way from X up to Y, I would have the point right around there. That would be for lambda 3 fourths, that would be 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths y, or x plus 3 fourths of the way from x up to y. And so it's clear intuitively here that for any two points that I take in the set S, the line segment between them, all the convex combinations of those two points are going to be in S. So that set is convex. And so, of course, we can draw uh, another set like the circle that's not convex. And let me draw, in this case, let me draw the set looking like this. And so now my set S, let's just use the same letter S again. My set S is, again, the boundary and all the stuff inside. And of course, that's not convex because I can take a point in here and a point here, let's let that be x, let's let that be y. I take all the convex combinations of them. Some of those convex combinations are in S, but there's this whole bunch of convex combinations here that are not in S. So again, not convex because it's kind of got this dent in it here, right? And this doesn't have any such dents, doesn't have any holes. So informally, intuitively, convex, not convex. Now, uh, let's, uh, let's take another set here. Let's take uh, this set here. Let's uh, call this set S2, and let's call this set up here S1. And so what about the union and the intersection? of convex sets. Well, let's look at first the union of S1, S2. 
That's everything inside here and everything inside the triangle, the union of the two. That's this funny shaped set consisting of a kind of a triangular type base and all this. Clearly not convex because I can take a point in here and another point in the set. Both of these points are in the union. Well, actually, that's not a good example. Let's take one over here like this and like this. So if I take these two points, they're both in the union of S1 and S2, but you can see there are points on the line segment joining them that are not in S1 union S2. And I'll even draw this to make that clear, it's just kind of barely not in the set. But if I'd taken ones a little farther over, that would have been more obvious. So this is not convex. So that tells me right away that the union of convex sets, even just two convex sets, may not be convex. In general, it won't be convex, but of course, we might have cases where it is, but the union of two sets is not necessarily, of two convex sets is not necessarily convex. What about the intersection? Let's take S1 intersect S2 and ask about that. Well, the intersection is this region in here, not that point out there. So the intersection of these two convex sets is convex. Again, informally, you can kind of see that it's obviously convex. And so in this case, S1 intersect S2 is convex. That doesn't tell me that the intersection of two sets that are convex will always be convex. But at least in this example, the union of these two convex sets is not convex. And the intersection of the two convex sets is convex. This turns out to be true much more generally, not just for these two sets and not even just for two sets. So in fact, uh, here we have our first theorem about convex sets, really elementary, and that is that the intersection of any collection of convex sets is convex. This would be a very small collection of only two convex sets, intersections convex. This says I could take any collection of convex sets and the intersection of all of them would be convex. So uh, let's, uh, let's actually uh, give a proof of this theorem. In fact, let's actually state the theorem a little more carefully. So or a little more formally, maybe I could say. So let's say the theorem is that if the set S sub A is convex, for every A, lowercase a, in the set capital A, then the intersection over all of the members of capital A of S of A is convex. So before we actually do the proof, which is, of course, going to be pretty elementary, I want to be clear about this formal statement here and that it, this does capture uh, what we have here in our theorem uh, a little more formally. It says if we've got any set A, this set could be the set over here. In this example here, the A is just the set consisting of the numbers 1 and 2, right? So. I've got the intersection of S1 and S2 is convex because both the individual sets are convex. But this says this A doesn't have to just have only two elements. It could be the intersection of n sets for n rather large. Then my A would be the set of integers 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n. But in fact, this says for any set A. So A here could be all the natural numbers. I could have the intersection of 1, 2, 3, 4, on up to all natural numbers. I could have the set A be all of R, all of R2. And I'm going to see, I'm going to show an example uh, like that uh, in just a moment. Let's first now do the proof of this theorem. So uh, we're going to say, uh, suppose, in fact, let's even say, uh, let S be the intersection. We don't have to do that, but that might make things look a little, even a little clearer. So it's kind of as if S over here 
was the intersection of S1 and S2. So let S be the intersection. Let X and Y be two elements of S. And let lambda be a scalar between 0 and 1. OK? So we've got now an arbitrary pair of points in the intersection set and an arbitrary scalar. And we want to show, so we need to prove that 1 minus lambda x plus lambda y is in S, in the intersection set. Well, because x and y is in S, and S is this intersection, we have x and y in SA for every A, because that's what it means to be in the intersection of all the sets indexed by the A's. Um, so it's in this set here, and this set's convex, because all of the sets S sub A are convex. So we have this. Therefore, since the set's convex, we have 1 minus lambda x plus y in SA, and that's going to be true for every A in A. And since this is in every one of these sets, therefore it's the case that um, 1 minus lambda x, this should be a lambda here, by the way. I left that out. I, I tend to do that a lot, by the way. <laughs> OK. So uh, this is therefore in the intersection of all of the sets SA. And that really completes the proof. But since I started off by saying, let this be S, let's just say this is S. And that completes the proof. We've taken arbitrary pair of points in the set that we're interested in. We've taken an arbitrary scalar, and we have shown that the corresponding convex combination of those two points is in the set that we're interested in uh, working with. And so therefore, that set is convex. So we have the intersection of any collection of convex sets is convex. So let's now look at a couple of examples of that. Let's actually take this uh, part off here, because I don't think we're going to need this again. So let me just take this off. Just give us a little more space here to work with. I don't, I'm not sure we'll need it, but let's just see what happens. OK. So let's take as a first example, so let's just say we have some examples here. Let's uh, suppose we have um, let's let's suppose we have S n equals um, let's let this be uh, zero uh, one over n and let's let it be the uh, closed interval from zero to one over n uh, for every n of course and so then we have uh, the intersection of all of these of all of these intervals is clearly going to consist of only uh, 0. So this is, over n, is 0. Just the singleton consisting of 0. And so again, let me make clear that this is the same as writing this. It's just that, and I could have written this instead as for all n, uh, let me just write it this way here. We could have written this instead as just n in the natural numbers. So that would have made it look more like what we have over here. So the natural numbers playing the role of capital A, and the n's are playing the role of the little a's. And so I could have written it this way instead of this way, but this is a little more common. Um, let's uh, look at the uh, example where this is 0 and this is 1 over n. Here, the intersection 
Uh, and here I'll write it this way this time. The intersection over all the ends of Sn is, well, uh, just like here, we're knocking out all the numbers other than 0, but 0 is not in any of the sets as well, so this is clearly the empty set. So I've got the intersection of, it turns out, an infinite number of sets, and it turns out to be the empty set. And so apparently, according to this theorem, the empty set is a convex set. Uh, I say, whoa, wait a minute, how can that be? Uh, and by the way, notice I didn't need to actually take an infinite intersection to get the empty set as my intersection. I could have intersected the triangle here with this set over here. Well, that set's not convex, so that's not very helpful. <laughs> I could have intersected the uh, triangle with some other set down here, like this little set here. Okay, <laughs> and the intersection of this set and this set, they're both convex. Intersection is the empty set. Um, can the, is the empty set really convex? Well, if that set, certainly according to this theorem, the empty set must be convex. Um, seems a little odd to think about, but if it, is, if it is convex, if the empty set is convex, then we should be able to verify that it's convex directly from the definition of a convex set. So let me suggest that you uh, pause the video at this point and pause it to see if you can figure out how I would show from, directly from the definition that the empty set is a convex set. So pause it here and we'll come back in a moment and uh, we'll see about that. Okay, I am assuming that you paused the video and you thought about it and you probably figured it out. You probably came up with the answer. And so let's see what the answer is. Well, the definition says if we have a set any such that any two points in the set, there, all the convex combinations of those points must be in the set, if I've got the empty set, then it is the case that for any two points in that set, convex combinations in there, because there aren't two points in the empty set. There's not even one point in the empty set. So the, the I guess you could say the remark, but I wouldn't call it a theorem, the result, that the empty set is convex does follow directly from the definition vacuously. It would be a proof, a vacuous type proof, because it would say um, that the condition for being convex is satisfied vacuously because there aren't any pairs of points in the empty set to begin with. So indeed, directly from the definition, we can see that's convex, but we, that we probably wouldn't have thought to do that. Whereas, once we have this result here, then it becomes obvious that the intersection, I'm sorry, then it becomes obvious that the empty set is going to have to be a convex set. Let's take, um, let's take uh, one more example here and let that be uh, Sn is um, 0 to n plus 1 over n, and uh, uh, let's take the intersection of all of those sets. Well, of course, when n is 1, this right-hand end point is 2, and then as n gets bigger, the right-hand end points move back toward 1, never becomes 1, but the intersection of all of the, I'll write it this way again, of all of these sets And this is to say, it is a convex set. Um, OK, that's the, those are several examples on the real line. Um, let's look at an example that uh, is in R2. And for that example, I want to take some of the things off of the 
off of the board here. So I'm going to take some things off and then we'll come right back and we'll uh, look at another example.